Hi y'all, welcome back. Uh, this is my channel where I just talk about a bunch of random animal facts. I have a few and I like to talk about them. So if you like to hear about animals, hear someone ramble on about their pets, not so much facts, but just ramble on about their pets, 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 go ahead and like this video and subscribe. So I did something kind of crazy. A lot of people think it's crazy. To me, it's logical and makes sense. I ordered a ton of dubia roaches in hopes of breeding them and having my own colony. I'm sick of crickets. <laughs> crickets are nasty. They stink. They get loud. They escape. It doesn't matter what you put them in. They find a way. If they can escape, they will escape. So I'm just kind of over crickets. I'm over having to like hold on to them to gut load them and I just Ugh. So, for a few years now, I've actually wanted a colony of dubia roaches. I just haven't gotten around to it. Well, I bit the bullet and I went ahead and did it. So, they're not here yet. I'll do an unboxing video. I'll show you their setup I have for them and everything whenever they do come in. Uh, or that's my hope anyway. I might not. <laughs> but, I am getting ready for them. So, behind me, I have all of the ingredients to make dubia chow. In addition to this, they do need fresh fruits and vegetables because that's how they hydrate. You don't just give them water. I'm pretty sure they'll drown. But um, fruit and vegetables is how they hydrate. <clears throat> so there are a ton of recipes on how to make your own dubia chow. You can order your own dubia chow or order some dubia chow from any website that sells dubia roaches from what I saw. It looked super easy to make. Uh, by yourself so that's the route that I'm gonna go I already had all of the ingredients believe it or not I even already had the fish food I haven't had fish in quite a while probably two years but I did and I don't think I've ever had goldfish so I don't know why I had this but I have an unopened thing of goldfish food that I found in my hall closet where I used to keep all of my pet stuff I don't keep it in there anymore but I found it recently, so it's gonna get put to use. There's tons of different ways to make dubia chow, roach chow, I guess you call it roach chow, right? There's tons of different ways to make roach chow. This is just the way that I'm gonna make it because it's what I had already. I did see a lot of people use cat food and dog food and fish flakes, so that's not necessarily the best thing to do because it's a high protein count. Um, I did see a way that I want to try making. I wanna use these fish flakes first. So I'm gonna use the fish flakes before I go out and buy anything new. Obviously I have dog food and cat food already on hand, but my animals need to eat those or eat that. That's what it's there for. I have nothing that will eat this. So I'm gonna use this goldfish food that was randomly in my hall closet for whatever reason. I don't know what cat that is or why they're crying. They probably need to go into a room. Hang on one second. Okay. Sorry, there's certain rooms the dogs aren't allowed into, but we let the cats in there, so they just stand in front of the doors and meow until we let them in, so I figured I'd go ahead and do that. Anyways, I don't remember exactly where I left off, but I'm sure it had something to do with using goldfish flakes for dubia chow, not using dog or cat food because I have animals who eat that already. Oh, the one way that I did see that made the most sense to me was people use the, like, dried up bearded dragon pellets. A bearded dragon is one of the animals who will be eating these roaches, so that is logical to me. That makes sense to use those. However, my bearded dragon doesn't get pellets, so I don't have any. He gets all fresh food, like you're supposed to do for your bearded dragons, by the way. Uh, so I don't have any. When I run out of the goldfish flakes, I will run and get some of those pellets and switch to start using those. That makes a ton of sense. But anyways, so this is what I'm putting in here. These are just a cup of corn flakes. I'm gonna go ahead and dump them. I already had those measured out. I have just regular oats, like old fashioned oats. Those are gonna go in there. These little like multi-grain, whole grain, crisp, like, I don't know what they're called. They're kind of good. I don't think this is an open bag, but I am gonna put some calcium and some multivitamin in there that I use on my reptiles. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. So anytime I cook, 
this is what I do. I just kind of, I read a bunch of ingredients and then I freehand everything. So I usually end up combining like four different ingredients and you know what? It's kind of what I'm doing here too. I'm gonna eyeball about half a cup of these oats. Half a cup of these oats. Just eyeball that, throw that in there. Uh, maybe just a sprinkle more. It probably would be better if I actually measured this, especially since it's the first time I'm making it and I am using it as like a staple for an animal, but it's kind of just not how I do things. Um, it really would be better if I did that, I'm sure. So, I'm gonna put a few taps. I'm gonna put a few of these in here, I'm gonna go ahead and break them up. Oh, I called you, but not because I have any of this for you, sorry. We'll go ahead and throw one more in there. I thought I was... Hmm, maybe not that one. I get really weirded out sometimes with like wheat products, especially. I'm always afraid. I see, I do this with almond flour too. I'm always afraid that there's bugs in there when in all actuality, it's probably just the little wheat like flakes, like an almond flour. It's like the little almond flakes or whatever, but so I'm going to put those in there and I'm going to kind of do the same thing and eyeball these flakes. I'm pretty sure these flakes smell just nasty enough for roaches to love them. So now I'm going to blend it up and be right back. Okay, so basically once you blend it all up together, it gets super powdery. And it looks something like this. It's super fine. There's a few big clumps still, but I actually need to make more of this. So yeah, there are a few big clumps. I'm gonna grind this up a little bit finer and then I'm just gonna store it in an old, I guess, spaghetti sauce jar. I always save my jars for storing things like this in just because A, one of my cats is a little heathen and he loves any kind of animal food. So my rat food, he loves to bust into those bags. I always end up having to open them up and put them into glass jars. As soon as I get the rat food in the house, I gotta put it up. Any kind of rat treats or dog treats are all in glass jars because of that cat who can also open up cabinet doors and pantry doors, pantry doors more so than cabinets. He doesn't get into cabinets anymore. Um, he's kind of outgrown that. So I'm just going to make up a whole bunch of this, fill up a jar, and I'll show you what it looks like in the jar when I'm done. Still grinding. Okay, so I just got done. This is about all I'm going to make today. You can see it's like super, super finely ground up. There are some pieces that just like wouldn't grind up anymore. You can kind of see them on top. They just weren't going to grind up anymore. So they either get eaten or they don't, but there's plenty for them to eat. I pre-mixed a whole bunch of them. Okay. So the blender thing takes a lot longer than I thought it would. And I'm not a very patient person. So I threw a whole mix of it in here and I pre-broke it up like with my hands and then a rolling pin and then threw it in the blender. And that went a lot quicker. So that's what I suggest doing. This isn't going to fit in the jar. I actually have another jar. I'll probably finish grinding this up and throw it in there. But as of right now, this is the roach chow. I'm really excited to see if they like it. Y'all have a good one.